Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, as an ex-IT guy, I still have an interest in trends around how IT departments are coping with big changes since the pandemic. Whether that be the security nightmare of an entire workforce working from home or the new equipment required and factors and drivers of IT budget growth, cloud budgets, all that stuff never leaves you. But I am glad that I never hear the words, Neil, Sage is down. Neil, data store is down. We've got a P1. I certainly don't miss those days. But (laughs) today I've invited Robin from Spiceworks Ziff Davis onto the podcast. Now, they are known as the global marketplace for connecting technology buyers and sellers across all marketing channels. And by leveraging the breadth and depth of relationships with millions of professionals involved in B2B tech purchase decisions... They're uniquely positioned to provide they're uniquely positioned to provide unparalleled insights and intelligence to help technology buyers and sellers grow their business. So I might not be the IT guy in the office anymore, but I can keep up to speed with what's going on still, and that's why another reason I record this podcast. So buckle up and hold on tight. So I can beam your ears all the way to Austin, Texas. So we can speak with Robin from Spiceworks Ziff Davis about all this and much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Robin. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? I'm thrilled to be here. So my name is Robin Pito. I'm the Managing Director of uh, Strategy and Research over at Spiceworks Ziff Davis. And I've been doing research for the tech industry for the last 20 years. These days, I'm overseeing a team of immensely talented analysts and researchers who are responsible of providing really unbiased uh, outcome-centric insights for our B2B clients. And Spiceworks Ziff Davis is a global marketplace known for connecting technology buyers and sellers across all marketing channels. But for people that might just be hearing about you guys for the first time, especially if it's an international audience, can you offer an overview of the kind of problems that you're solving now you're helping your customers with technology? Absolutely. Yeah. So like you mentioned, we actually help two groups, the those who are buying technology and, and have a technology need and the people selling it. So I'll explain kind of each one of them here. The For those who are buying technology and um, think of them as IT professionals uh, for the most part, but increasingly business decision makers, HR professionals, um, a lot of people are buying different technology solutions. And we have an online community where all of those buyers can connect with each other and and ask questions of their peers for product advice and recommendations or technical troubleshooting or advice about compatibility issues. So in addition to that very human connection within, within that buyer community, we're also offering various different educational resources that make it a really sticky platform. So learning modules, how-to guides, all kinds of different assets that they can use at their fingertips to learn about technology as they may need. And we make it easy for them to connect with the technology companies through community engagement. So if you are an IT buyer and you're in in our community and you want to ask a question to someone like Adele about um, their next gen servers, you know, you can you can engage with Dell in a, a very um, human way within that, that forum. So that takes me to our second group, those sellers. So how do we help all of those sellers and those technology companies? Basically, we help all of those tech brands get unparalleled access to those in-market buyers at every step of their journey. Um, So as those buyers are asking for technical advice, troubleshooting, um, they may not necessarily need a new product or purchase, but uh, we we can have a connection back to Dell or HP or Lenovo or, or any one of those brands to help troubleshoot with that. 
And in addition to uh, enabling them to connect with those in-market buyers, we also have services that allow us to help those companies strategically plan, develop, and execute integrated marketing campaigns that are really relevant for those buyers. And behind that, uh, that enablement for that tech selling community, if you will, is a rich, high quality data source all around technology intent segments. And it's really unparalleled in this particular sector. That backbone of really reliable, rich data helps ensure that tech brands can target in-market decision makers across the entire buying collective to get the right message to the right people out in a relevant form while they're in a business mindset. So in that way, we're, we're connecting buyers and sellers in a really relevant way. Love that. And one of the things that we've been talking about on this Daily Tech podcast over the last 12 months is, is speaking with people from a wide range of industries, from education to agriculture. And of course, a little over a, a little under a year ago, everyone was suddenly faced with having to buy lots of tech equipment at the, within a very short amount of time. So I'm curious, what kind of trends or changes in IT did you notice due to the pandemic? Well, yeah, it's certainly been a massive catalyst for yeah. change over the last year. Really a lot to discuss here, and, and we could spend hours yeah. talking through all of this, but there's three overarching areas of transformation, and IT is having a huge role in all of those. So the first one is enabling a remote workforce, uh, ensuring that users can access the tools and the information and the data they need to do their job every day is critical, um, but also enabling them to collaborate with their team members and their partners, their clients, their coworkers. So enabling that remote workforce has been a massive uplift and it had to happen very quickly last March. Um, but what we're hearing in the market is that there's still ongoing work to be done to make those, um, those remote workers even more effective and better supported in, in a technology framework. So then the second area of transformation that, that we've seen is a massive movement in businesses looking to opera, optimize their operations. So all of these companies had to go through the process of defining their own version of essential, really inward looking to optimize their own processes. Perhaps disruptions in the supply chain forced this on them in ways they hadn't been expected they needed to do before. Others needed to innovate to address the new market dynamic and, and reaching their customer base may not have been possible in person anymore. So how do they deliver their goods and services in other ways and make sure that they can do so quickly while, of course, managing their own costs? And the third layer of transformation that, that we're still going through in all honesty is digital transformation. Um, you know, a lot of companies were trying to adopt digital transformation practices two years ago, three years ago even, um, but the pandemic abs absolutely accelerated all of that. And, you know, those three dynamics are massive and any one of them is not yet complete, even though all of them started last year. So over the coming years, we'll, we'll continue to see those evolutions. And, you know, with those three in the backdrop, you know, what are, what are the IT changes? You know, I feel like I should at least acknowledge the considerable economic downturn that's still impacting us globally. And there are so many businesses that close temporarily or close permanently. And, and certainly some industries are facing years um, to, to experience a full recovery from that. So all of that economic uncertainty is, is at the backbone of all of this. And I don't want to overlook that per se, but my goal here is just to, to give you a sense of, of those companies who are oper still operating, you know, how is IT evolving? How is technology changing and, and what's going on on the front lines there? And that's a great point that you've made there because it almost feels that on one hand, businesses are, are cutting back and on the other, they need to invest in remote working technologies. So uh, have you noticed any significant impacts on IT budgets and, and how things are swaying there? Absolutely, yeah. The, so businesses are reevaluating their expenditures and every year we run a survey of about a thousand IT decision makers and 
our goal is to understand IT budgets. So kind of grounded in that body of work, every year we ask them first, you know, what do you expect your overall company revenue to look like next year compared to past years? And for the first time in 2021, most of those IT people are, are telling us they expect their company revenue to stagnate or decline. And that it absolutely is tied into the really challenging economy right now. But when we asked a similar question around what are your expectations for your IT budget in 2021, they don't expect those to decline at the same rate as what they expect the overall company revenue to decline. So in fact, 80% are telling us that they expect their IT budget to stay the same in 2021 or, or increase a bit since last year. And where they are shifting those budgets is, is also kind of evolving. So you'd probably, I'm, I was personally surprised to see that much stability in the IT market. That tells me that technology is part of mission critical operations that companies are really reluctant to scale back on. Um, but where they are putting their dollars will be different going forward than, than where it has been in the past. And usually you see a significant portion of the budget going to hardware. Um, laptops and servers and all of those things are, are still a portion of the budget, but where we are seeing growth in the budget is related to cloud. As companies accelerate their cloud workload migrations and look to enable a more dynamic workforce, cloud is, is really at the center of that. The other area that's that's really expanding in budgets is related to managed services. So as companies are trying to expedite new projects that they don't necessarily have the expertise to support in-house, they're looking outside their own walls for managed services providers to help them through that, that transition. So 2021 budgets for both of those areas are growing. Now, that doesn't mean it's, it's net positive, it's actually coming out of other budgets. So where we're seeing declines in tech budgets is actually related to emerging technologies. And what do I mean by emerging technologies? Well, um, things like virtual reality, um, internet of things, artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain technologies, all of those more emerging technologies in a healthy economy, people are really excited about experimenting with those. But in the current economy, people are really uh, stepping away from that. We're seeing declines in two-year plans to adopt those new technologies as people take that budget and reallocate it to support mission-critical operations when it comes to cloud or managed services or, or even new laptop purchases. So that's been an interesting dynamic to see uh, what technologies have really kind of slowed and which ones have, have been uh, kind of growing. And I appreciate this is probably a huge question, especially right now, but what, what are the, the major factors and drivers of IT budget growth? Is it this sense of everybody wanting to change and evolve to the new climate or is there something else going on? Some of the reasons are pretty basic. They may yeah. be a little bit more predictable than you'd expect. Yeah. And, um, the core reason is replacing or upgrading outdated technology. Um, and, and maybe that's more intense now because their outdated technology where they may have been able to limp along if their workforce wasn't remote, maybe it would have been fine. Um, but that's, that's the single biggest reason, which is, is certainly understandable and a very rational purchase decision. Uh, there are a couple of other things, too, that drive it. Increasing priority on IT projects is part of that equation. And what those IT projects are varies from company to company. And certainly the, the kinds of IT projects you'd probably see now in education to support remote learning uh, or distance learning is, is probably pretty different than what you'd expect to see at a bank. Uh, so that increased priority on IT projects is the number two reason for that growth. And the third one is security concerns. There are always threats and that climate is, is continuing to get more concerning to IT pros. And that helps to um, kind of garner additional IT budget to make sure they're closing those gaps and staying up to date. 
And something else that has really transformed over the last 12 months is how we communicate with each other. It wasn't too long ago where you'd go and sit in the office and there'd be a phone on the desktop and maybe an instant messaging app in there. But can you expand on the shifts in the use of business communication tools and also the future of business chat apps? Because there's so many now, isn't there? Yeah. So the use of web conferencing apps just exploded last year in not only in volume of use, but also in frequency. So we have a lot more users regularly going into web conference solutions or um, video conferencing has now become almost the the norm for a lot of uh, teams and, and businesses. And that frequency is not slowing down anytime soon. It doesn't mean it's necessarily easy in that a lot of users are still experiencing technical difficulties with those solutions. So there's still some work to be done to make that a more seamless experience, especially since there's so many different tools out there. Um, And there's, there's companies that have standard internally on one tool, but perhaps need to use and reference different tools when they reach out to clients, for example. But In addition to massive transformations in the way we use video conferencing tools, to your point, those business chat apps, so things like Slack and Teams and Google Hangouts, um, all of those enable real-time team-based communications back and forth. In fact, we're seeing a lot of growth in use, and we're we're hearing from the market that preferences are shifting away from email communications in favor of these real-time chat applications. I'm not saying email is going away anytime soon, um, but we're starting to see some dynamic shifts in the market around that. Now, why would people prefer these chat applications instead of email? Well, you know, these chat applications are typically internal deployments, so it doesn't necessarily have the clutter of your email box in that you can chat with your coworkers and your teams in a very fast real-time experience that that feels more like a natural conversation. But these chat applications go beyond just uh, simple text messages and they allow users to attach documents and embed rich media. Uh, They often are integrated with voice and video functionalities. So if you are messaging with a teammate and then you realize, oh, we, we need to talk through this, it's easy because a lot of them just have a single button that allows for a quick voice call. So users can quickly, kind of go back and forth rather than emailing about when is your schedule open so we can schedule a meeting and talk about this, you know, it enables that uh, to occur more organically, driving connections between teams that are otherwise in, in pretty different spaces right now. So from that use case, we're expecting that growth to consider uh, to continue growing and, and expanding over time rather than contracting. And I'm curious, have you seen any security concerns around remote working or any attitudes changing towards that? What kind of uh, attitudes are you are you finding from your customers? I'm glad you brought up security. It is always <laughs> <laughs> it is always at the the center of IT's yeah. mind. You know, they're probably losing sleep over it, and we're pre-pandemic as well. But with such a, a scattered remote workforce it has sparked even even new concerns, particularly around endpoint device security, but beyond just those endpoint devices, vulnerability management, um, detecting those security events and, and the speed of security incident response time. So all of those dynamics are now front and center and, and more of a concern than they would have been without that remote workforce being in place. And so what that's translating to is we're seeing a a demand in the market where IT pros are planning to adopt more advanced security solutions over the next couple of years. And those security solutions, and what do I mean by advanced? It would be things like employee security training tools, advanced um, anti-ransomware solutions, hardware authentication, breach detection systems, security solutions that are powered by artificial intelligence, All of those are poised for growth over the next couple of years in response 
um, to the new challenges framed with, with having this remote workforce. And the end goal with, with adopting all of those solutions is, is certainly a recognition that there is no uh, single thing that can safeguard a company's data. Uh, it has to be a multi-layered security architecture to be effective against these threats. And so that's, that's really driving the interest in such strong adoption across the board. I've heard so many horror stories from the security point of view as well, especially on Microsoft Teams or or Zoom calls where people have even had post-it notes with passwords on a, a whiteboard or cork board behind them yeah. and displaying yeah. it to everyone. It's just uh, incredibly oh, yeah. interesting times. But uh, So when workers do start returning to physical offices and we might end up with a, a hybrid kind of model, I would expect, what, what do you think the workforce of the future will look like? Yeah, you're right. I, it will be very hybrid. So uh, it's not necessarily going to look like what our experience is today. It won't go back to what it was before either. So it will entail sizable portions of that workforce being um, working from home, working from other remote locations, and others going into the physical office. And honestly, that that physical office space will also be transforming based on on the needs and the new dynamics of the workforce. So in addition to kind of a work from anywhere experience, which also includes an an office as an important element of that, there will need to be ways to monitor building occupancy levels to make sure that, you know, if there there is still restrictions on the number of people that can be in an enclosed space, you know, that the company has an easy way to monitor that. And I think hot desking will become more of the norm than the exception. There are certainly companies that have adopted hot desking, which is uh, where there's an office space and it has a common work uh, space with desks and chairs and file cabinets and all of that, but there's no assigned seats. And there's companies that had already adopted those those practices pre-pandemic, but I think that will probably be more of the, the normal experience going forward. And that means there's got to be reservation systems that make it easy for end users to make sure they're going to have a desk when they go into the office, um, to make sure that they have a conference room if they're trying to bring their team together. Um, and they want to make sure that that conference room is big enough to fit the number of people that they, they hope to host. So that hot desking, that uh, visibility into the space reservation will will be an important part of that. And collaboration tools will continue to be essential. So as we have those more distributed teams where they where they are sitting, whether that be in that office space um, on a beach somewhere, <laughs> or perhaps you know from their own home, you know those collaboration tools are going to be hugely important for enabling all of that. Love that. And as we do look towards the future, is there anything in particular that excites you about the road ahead in in technology and the workplace? There's got to be a few things there. Absolutely. The you know, at a very high level, I am excited to experience such a massive transformation for fans. And it certainly isn't easy. Um, you know, the and it certainly isn't easy to change this much this quickly. But the experience will change the daily life of of people globally who are previously going into an office to work and shifting where people spend their time will absolutely have long lasting impacts on social and family dynamics. The full impact of that is yet to be seen um, from a human perspective, but that very uh, human shift is only possible as long as those underlying technologies are supporting the business functions in the way that they are. And communications technology is at the heart of that. Security solutions are critical for that. And, you know, those challenges presented by the pandemic have really forced people and companies to be more flexible in really unexpected ways. And as a researcher, it's interesting to me personally just to observe how humans experiment with solutions for those unexpected roadblocks. And it's been great to see the technology solutions really hold up and support uh, a lot of business operations and human beings throughout this this really difficult situation. 
Well, I love chatting with you today. But before I do let you go, if anyone listening would like to find out more information about the work that you're doing or even contact your team if they've got any questions, what's the best way of doing that? Sure. We have a fantastic website. Uh, It is swzd.com. And at that website, we have a resources tab at the right that has links to our research reports, our blogs, all kinds of really rich information. So I would encourage anybody with with a thirst or uh, an interest in technology to consult that site. And if, if there's questions and if you want to have a more personalized conversation, feel free to reach out to me at robinp at swzd.com. Was well, an ex IT guy, Robin. I must admit, I could chat with you for hours about IT budget and tech trends and changes in IT, tech spending, etc. Because of the uh, pandemic, but also the road ahead and how the workplace is going to change. I've just loved having you on here. I'd love to get you on towards the end of the year and see how things are further progressing. But more than anything, thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with me today. Yeah, I would love to. It will be really interesting at the end of this year to see how things unfold, some of the things that, uh, some of the complications that probably we're facing and we we are not even aware of yet. So I'd love to be back and uh, really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for having me. The future of tech in the workplace, shifting the use of business communication tools, future of business chat apps, remote working security concerns, workers returning to physical offices and what the workforce of the future will look like. All that stuff still excites me today. And I I won't apologise for admitting that either. And a big thank you to Robin for coming on and sharing her insights there because... If you remember the days of going to a music venue or a tech conference, do you remember those days? <laughs> but I was always the guy that checks the till software. I can spot an Aloar till software from 10 paces if it's floating around the screen. I enjoy taking a peek behind the curtain to what brings everything to life, where the comms room's located and counting where the wireless arrays are situated that are giving out that free Wi-Fi. But I'm probably not doing myself any favours by admitting that. But I love chatting with Robin today for all those reasons. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, your experiences, insights about any of the topics that we discussed today. And please tell me, can you spot an low or till icon floating around a screen at 10 paces? Whatever it is, questions, you want to come on the podcast, my door is open to all of you. So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk. You'll find links to all my social channels, 1,500 interviews and the other podcasts with Citrix and Netgear on there as well. So enough excitement for one day. I'll return again tomorrow when I've calmed down a little and we'll do it all again. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.